and I play red. Today, I, initially, I was going to say, we're going to look at an older game. And then I looked it up and it was 2017 and I kind of feel torn. Can we really call games that are five years old old? I don't think so. But it's a name you'll all know and not from this game. We are going to have a look at Riverboat from Michael Keesling. Um, published by Mayfair Lookout Spiel. Five years old. I mean, if I was judged the same way I'd judge games, I'd just be knackered. Um, but it's a slightly older game from 2017. Let's have a look at how it plays. In Riverboat, you will be farming along the Upper Mississippi in the early 19th century. Advancements are expanding your opportunities, allowing you to increase the size and variety of your crops and develop your river boats. Hire agents to sell your goods and advise you to help you build an empire along the Mississippi. Riverboat is a limited action game played over four rounds. There are five phases in each round represented by these tiles, which also act as a great guide throughout the game while you're playing it. As well as the two main game boards, each player will have their own board. These are all identical except for the colour of the shed at the bottom there. So I've got the red one. There's a surprise. Determine a start player for the round and then take it in turns for players to pick these phase tiles until they've all gone. So this may mean that if you're playing two player, one player is going to have two, one player is going to have three, but all players will get a chance to act in each phase. Players that have the tile for the phase will get a special bonus and will go first in that phase. Each phase has also got a coin action at the bottom, whereby all players can spend a coin to essentially break the rules of the game. So each tile has got quite a lot of information on them. Let's have a look in detail at what that information is. Number one is the cultivation phase. The player who takes this tile gets to take an additional worker from the round board here. So they get to take, in this case it'd be the first round, take the first worker and choose to place it somewhere on their player board, which at the moment is a bit hit or miss. I'm going to go there. So that is my bonus action from taking the number one tile. Next, all players will have a chance to place workers on their board. We're going to take the top eight cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as it shows you there. And whoever's going first or whoever wants to do it is going to flip these over and announce them to the group. So this first one here is clubs. Now, the symbols are quite small on these, but the colour also represents the colour on the board. So now I get to place a worker on a club space. So I'm going to pop that there. When you place them, they don't have to be connected. They just have to match the card. So the second one is a club. Um, oh, star, right, can go next to that one, another club, my word, okay, diamond, um, there, hearts, um, now you don't have to place your workers next to each other, but there are definite advantages to it which will find out about in a bit diamond so that is my eight workers the special action here is you can pay a coin 
to ignore the card. So if I hadn't wanted that diamond, I could have paid a coin and just put a worker anywhere I wanted. So that's phase one done. Easy, huh? Phase two is the planting phase. Whoever takes this gets to take a coin and then players are gonna take turns choosing crop tiles. The bonus here is that players can pay one coin to take any tile out of the piles. Um, and there's actually these cards here that show you exactly what there is in terms of tiles. So if you're after something specific, you can have a look there and see. So let's have a look at what I want. At the moment, we're a bit in limbo. I am going to take, I'm going to take this free tile. Now, this little shield symbol here represent points. So because I take that, I'm going to immediately get two points and go up on the score track. And I then get to place this underneath my workers. So I'm actually going to pop that there and the workers go back on top. Um, other players are going to take their turns, then it's going to come back to me and I don't really know. I think I'm going to take more potatoes and wheat and there's a reason for that, which I'll share in a bit. I'm going to pop that one there. And if you notice, these double spaces have one, so I'm going to get another point for that. And oh, I've got lots of space. I'm going to take this potato, 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 and pop him there. And I'm going to call it quits. So all players will take it in turns. You can take as many tiles as you have space for or that are left on the board. So that's our second phase. The third phase is the harvesting and shipping phase. And this one's actually the most complicated. It's not really complicated, but there's more to this phase than to most of the other phases. So the person who takes this gets to move their harbour master up one on their board. Um, if you notice, there's different spots here for where your harbour master starts, depending on the player count. At the start of the round, one of each river boat is available. During this round, each player is gonna have a chance to take two. The coin action for this phase actually enables you to take one from up the top here. So if someone else had taken that tile and I wanted it, I could pay a coin to take from there. To claim a riverboat tile, you need to harvest from your player board. You're going to remove an exact number of workers equal to the capacity shown on the riverboat tile. So I've got two on wheat. All workers must come off the same type of crop, but not necessarily next to each other. So I'm going to take two off, so I've harvested those, and I can take either one of these tiles. This is two points and one harbour master movement and one point and two movement. I'm actually going to go for this one. I'm going to pop that there and I immediately get the benefit shown. So I move my harbour master up two and my point marker up by one. Then for my second riverboat action, I'm going to take four of my potatoes and I'm going to take this tile. So I pop that up there, I immediately get the benefit shown, which is a barn. So I guess now let's talk about barns. A barn can be placed on an empty space on my board. 
During the scoring phase of the game, round five, I can choose to put a surveyor on there and score him. Barnes will score you the most crops of a single type around them. So in this case, it would score me two points for my potatoes. If I can get more potatoes there before I score him, I'll get more points. So for now, I'm going to put my barn there. The other special things you can get from the river boats are wells. Now, wells work in a similar way to barns, except you're actually going to place them onto a crop space. When the time comes and you score them, you're going to gain points for the contiguous number of the same crop type that he's on. So in this case, it would be potatoes. If I'd scored now, it would get me two. However, if I join them, oops, uh, if I join them and then score it, I'll get one, two, three, four, five points. So you can see how both the barns and the wells can bump your points up nicely. Didn't get a well, didn't get that. I just got my barn. The third estate feature is these green workers, the surveyors. These, as I showed you with the barns and wells, will help you score. There's actually one other way they score, which we'll move on to in a minute. So estate features you can get from your riverboat. So there's your barn, there's your surveyor. Um, here you have the option of a well, a barn, or a surveyor. The other action on here that we've not spoken about is these symbols. So this is to pop one of your workers in your manor house, or two, or three. So if I were to take one of these, I'd pop one of my workers into my manor house here. If you notice, there's the four different colour steps representing the four player colours. And again, these will potentially score you points at the end of the game and score you points during the scoring round of the game. Now, the harbour track up here will score you some end game points depending on how far your harbour masters travelled. Only the boats that you've travelled to or past will score you. However, only the person whose harbour master has travelled the furthest up the board will get full points. Everyone else will only get half points. So if I'd managed to get here, I'd score two, four, so six points. If my harbour master was furthest up the board, if he wasn't, that would only get me three points. But these are going to give you points and actions in the game, so are still super valuable. So, moving on to phase four, the opportunity phase. The player who takes this tile will get one point. Super simple. And then, taking it in turns, you're going to choose an opportunity card to take. At the start of each round, four are placed here. Each player gets to claim a card and take the associated bonus shown at the top here. Now, as you might guess, this is why I was looking at potatoes. So, I'm going to take this card... I get a surveyor as my bonus and I just pop that card by the side, take my surveyor, put him into my supply. The coin action here actually allows you to rummage through the deck and find a card you like, but you're not then going to get that bonus shown on the board. That's the opportunity phase. Then lastly, we have the scoring phase. The bonus is your choice. You can take a coin, have a harbour master movement, or 
proper worker into your manner. This is where you're going to use your surveyors to score. So in the first, second and third round, you're going to be able to place two of them. In the fourth round, you can actually place a maximum of three. So now, if I wanted to, I could place a surveyor there and score two for my potatoes. I could place a surveyor here and score four again for my potatoes. However, I can get a maximum of 15 from that card. So I may or may not want to hold off on that. I'm going to leave it there for now. Because at the end of the scoring phase, you're going to get one point for every surveyor that you've scored. So if I had scored those, I'd get one point, two points for my surveyors. You're then going to get points for any workers you have in your manor house. So I'd get one additional point if I had one of my workers there. At the end of the round, the harvest board is going to be restocked. Um, can't quite reach that three. Do, do. Oh, yeah. Um, any cards that weren't used here go, and these are going to be replaced. One, two, four, four. A lot of these are fairly obvious once you've played this a couple of times and you know the symbols. Um, so this is going to be points for your sheds, points for each of the triple hexes, points for workers in your mansion and points for coins. So a lot of the symbology makes sense. These are going to restock. The tiles are going to go back in the middle. First play marker moves on and we start again. Play continues in exactly the same way for four rounds. So you're going to have four rounds with five actions in each round. Then we're going to move on to final scoring. You're going to get one victory point for each coin you have left at the end of the game. And it's on the board, I hadn't noticed that. You're going to get seven points if you manage to completely fill any of these areas. And you're going to get two points for each unused estate feature. So for your wells, your bonds and your surveyors, you're going to get two points for each of them. Your harbour scoring. So if you're the furthest along, you're going to get full points. Anyone else is going to get half. And then there's a bonus for you guys in the manor house. So the player with the most is going to get 20, then 10, then 5, and then nada. Player with the most points wins. Riverbow is one of those Euros that just never got the love it deserved. Um, I'm trying to think, it might have been around the same time that Azul was released so maybe everyone was focusing on us all and not looking at anything else um michael keesling had done i really enjoy this um i'm a big fan of these limited action games i don't know what the proper term is um but you've got four rounds five actions that's it everything you do has to matter i really like that um there's quite a few games we've been playing of late that do that um like lorenzo is the other obvious one coimbra it tends to be the italian designers actually um i really like that so well hidden little gem um there's lots going on but there's also not much going on so everything you need to know is on the tiles which is super helpful the symbols are a bit small um but then you've also got the colors so they have thought about that to some degree really like it um in typical euro style it's two to four players 
Um, I think, what do they reckon for time? 90 minutes, 90 minutes. Um, it's really nice. Um, check it out, it's been available for a while. Um, go and find it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click like and subscribe. Come and say hello on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.